Hello everyone, my name is Yi and I'm on the implementation team here at Plaid and I'm here to share with you a high level overview of the Plaid integration process. In this video, I'm going to review all the components of a standard Plaid integration, how these components interact with your application and Plaid, where are the critical integration points and best practices to build a world-class application using Plaid? By the end of this video, you will have a solid foundation of what your Plaid integration should look like and where to find the supporting resources you may need as you build out each component of your Plaid integration. Okay, let's get started. We have broken down the integration into three separate swim lanes representing your front end, your back end, and Plaid. We will show where each function and process should originate and communicate with as we progress through the integration. The process begins in your application as end users navigate towards connecting either a new institution or fixing an existing connection, you want to ensure that you have created a link token in order to initialize link. A link token can be created right as the end user selects to connect an institution, or you can create it earlier in the process as link tokens are valid for up to 30 minutes. There are two methods to initialize link, one for adding a new institution and the other link in update mode is used to fix issues that may exist on previously linked institutions. The key difference here is whereas when adding a new institution, link will need the end user to search and find the institution they want to connect to, link in update mode will navigate the end user directly to the previously linked institution. As Plaid Link validates and helps end users connect to their institutions, it will provide a series of callback information. There are three types of callbacks. The on exit callback, which indicates that the end user has exited Link without successfully connecting to an institution. We recommend that you review the on exit callback to perhaps better understand why the end user may have exited Link and create some proactive, helpful messaging as the end user returns to your application. The on success callback, which indicates that the end user has successfully connected to an institution, will yield the public token. To complete the Plat item creation process, you will need to exchange the public token for an item's access token. The item's access token must be stored, as that is the main identifier used to obtain data for that item from the Plat API. The third type of callbacks are the on event callbacks, which indicates how, what steps did the end user take as they progress through the link experience. These callbacks are very helpful for understanding and measuring end user conversion metrics in link. All three types of callbacks should be logged and stored to help with troubleshooting and analytics. Now, depending on the type of Plaid products you're using, you can either hit the Plaid product API endpoint right away to obtain the created items data, or you may have to wait a bit before the data will be available. For products such as Instant Auth, Identity, Balance, you will not need to wait. While for others, such as transactions and investments, Plaid will notify you via webhooks on when the data will be available. Hitting the product endpoints before the data is available will yield a product not ready error. If you are using recurring Plaid products such as transactions and investments, where Plaid will routinely check for updated data from the institution from one to four times a day for each item, if there is any updated data for the item, a webhook will be sent to notify you that there is new data available via the Plaid product endpoint. From time to time, Plaid may lose connectivity to an item. If so, then an item error webhook will be sent to notify you that the end user will need to fix the issue on the item by using link in update mode. Once the connectivity has been restored, then Plaid will continue to pull data for the recurring products. Now that we have reviewed the integration process flow, 
This diagram should help inform and guide you as you design, build, and integrate Plaid into your application. Next, here I have highlighted some of the key resources that are available to you. First, we have the Plaid dashboard, your Plaid integration headquarters for all things Plaid. Then we have the Plaid docs, yours and my favorite website. We also have all the available Plaid libraries and the Plaid quick start here to help you get started. Another favorite is the Plaid blog, where you will find all the latest and greatest that's happening at Plaid. And last, but certainly not least, please tweet at Plaid Dev if you ever want to come chat with us. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was helpful and informative. You should now have a solid understanding of all the fundamental elements of a Plaid integration and how they should work with each other. Please let us know your thoughts and feedback below in the comments section. And please also subscribe to our channel to get the latest and greatest videos from Plaid. Thanks again.